Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking a little bit more about searching. And in all the examples I've had um, of searching so far, where we're trying to look for something in a list, um, it's been order n. Um, so for example, if I um, had this list here uh, that I'm illustrating in the top right, and then I ran this piece of code, 27 and L, it doesn't look like there's a loop there, but what will actually happen is that Python will loop over all this range until it actually finds 27. And so this is an order in operation, because if I have a bigger list, then the worst case is that I have to look at all the items, because the item might be near the end. Now, uh, I'm going to erase all of this here. And what I want you to notice about this list I have is that the numbers happen to be sorted. So I start with 1, the smallest number, and I go up to 99, the largest number. And uh, when we have sorted numbers, it turns out, or sorted any, anything, uh, it turns out there's an algorithm for it called binary search that is going to be let, let us be faster than order n. So what I want to do here is first kind of show you how binary search works and then talk about the complexity of it. So with my binary search function here, I'm passing in my list L and I'm passing in the target, which is what I'm looking for. You can see down here I'm calling it with this list, this number, and um, and uh, and I'm going to assume that n is the length of the list as usual, right? So that's what I'm passing in. And, and the whole idea here, when we're searching for something, is that we're going to start in the middle of the list, and rather than starting at the beginning like we normally do, we're going to start in the middle, and we're going to see if the thing we're looking for is bigger or smaller than that middle. And that'll help us because if it's smaller, well, then we know that if item is here, it's going to be somewhere on the left. And I can basically ignore looking at anything on the right-hand side. Um, so basically, with kind of doing one step, we can cut the work in half. And so this is going to be an algorithm where we repeatedly cut the size of list in half, and, um, and that's going to be better than order n. OK, so, so if I'm looking at the, uh, how the code starts up here, I have this left index and my right index, and those point to 0 and then the length of the list. And, and so I'm just going to draw some arrows there. So I guess my left index is at position is at position zero, and then my right one is at position eight, which is I guess is just past the list. And um, and and well, let me think a little bit about how I'm going to draw this because I guess the the left index is inclusive and the right index is exclusive. And so well, what does that mean? That means that that zero is including that zeroth item, right? So I'm going to kind of draw that bar there. Maybe I could draw it as an arrow. I'm just not going to do it though because I'm going to keep um, uh, kind of redrawing this. That would be there because that's inclusive. So I want to include zero, um, zero on the on the left, and on the right hand side. Well, I guess I'm also going to move that one to the left because that one is also um, uh, exclusive, right? So. So, so when it's inclusive, I want to move it in the direction that kind of covers more items. When it's exclusive, I want to move it um, in the direction that covers fewer items. And, and so I guess for the left bound, that means moving left. And for the right bound, it also means moving moving left. OK, so, so I'm starting off. And well, what, is, what do these two indexes mean? Uh, these mean that this is the range of possible values that might have what I'm looking for. In this case, I'm looking for um, 27. Okay, so it could be anywhere in there. And so what do we do? Well, we have this loop. Well, right index minus left index is greater than 1. Uh, what, what does that mean? So right index is less than left index is greater than 1. That means that this range over here contains at least one item, right? So I want to keep shrinking this range until it's either empty, which means well, I didn't find it, or it contains one item. And then, well, I can just check that one item to see if it's what I'm looking for. Right, so that's what this loop down here is doing, right? It's trying to keep cutting this in half. So, so I see right away that there's a middle index, which is right index plus left index divided by 2, and I'm rounding down. And, and so I guess my right index is 8, and my left index is 0, so this is 4. And so I, I guess I'm going to draw this bar right here. Here, here is kind of the middle. And, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be checking at position 4, so just to the right of that, I'm going to see is that value bigger or smaller than what I'm looking for? That's what I'm doing over here, right? Is target uh, bigger or smaller than that middle value that I'm, I'm getting? And while I'm looking for 27, and this is just 11, so it's bigger. So, so that means that I know that 
I, I haven't determined if 27 is here yet, but, but if it is, I know it has to be on this right-hand side. And, and so, well, what do I do here? So I'm gonna run this piece of code here. I know it's on the right-hand side. So I'm gonna move the left end of the range into the middle. So in the second iteration of the loop, I'm gonna be like this. I'm gonna be like left index is here and my right index is here. And then again, I'm gonna uh, figure out where my middle index is, right? So I'm gonna look like that. And then again, I'm gonna compare 27 to this, right? So I'm doing this again. So is target greater than or equal to the middle? Yeah, well, I guess 27 is greater than or equal to 27. And, and you can imagine versions of this where I maybe realize, oh, I got lucky and I already found it and I return early. Um, but we're just gonna look at what this code does exactly. Um, and, and so I know it's on the right-hand side, so I'm gonna narrow it down to this and this, right? So I know that it's somewhere um, in, in between there, right? And I'm gonna keep going. Okay, so the next pass through, I'm gonna set my middle to here, right? And, and now what? Now I'm kind of checking this value to the right and I can see, oh, well, that, that is bigger, uh, that, that is bigger than 27, right? So now I actually see a case where I'm gonna set the, the right index to the middle. So kind of in this last pass, what do I get? I get narrowed down to just this and this. And then when I come back to my loop, I see, okay, well, uh, right index minus left index equals one exactly. So I've narrowed it down. So I do this final check. So right index greater than left index means that I have at least one item. And so I'm checking if that one item is what I want. And indeed it is. And then I'm gonna return true, okay? And so what I want you to see here is that in this case, I had uh, I had eight items. And when I had eight items, I had to cut the list in half three times, right? And so maybe what we can do is we can try to think a little bit more generally, right? If I, if I look up at this code here, well, let's think about this code. This is the code that, uh, that cuts it in half. And, um, and it turns out that if I look at this code, it's possible to define that as a single step. And, and then really that's the only thing inside of a loop. So, so really what I wanna do is I wanna think about, well, how many times does that step execute, right? And that's trickier than usual, right? Because usually I have like a for loop and it's going over um, everything in a list. And so then it's easy. Here it's trickier because it's a while loop and it's not really obvious how long it goes. And so let's just have a little table here, right? So I'm gonna say, uh, you know, what is N, which is the size of my list. And, um, and then like how many times does the, uh, what is the exact count for my step? And well, what I've already seen is that um, if the list is of size eight, um, I have to split it in half three times. Um, I guess if my list was of size four, I'd have to split it in, in twice half, right? I'd draw four, two, one. So I'd, I guess I would get two there. If I had a list of size two, I'd have one, so on and so forth. And, and maybe what you're gonna see here is that there's a there's a pattern, right? The the counts, maybe maybe let me say say this, right? So uh, I was maybe if I say something like, you know, the uh, exact count, maybe I'll say that's E. Well, it, it equals the log base two of N. Okay, and I'm not trying to prove it here, but it turns out that if I want to look at the complexity of this, um, all of the logs are are the same. So I could actually erase this here, right? It, it's uh, when I go to complexity, I guess I can't erase it here because I kind of have an exact formula. Um, but what I can say is that binary search, so I'll say binary search, binary search is in the complexity class of order log n. And I'm not proving it here, but it doesn't really matter what base it has as because all of these are equivalent. And, and so this is very cool because well, what, what have we seen now? Um, we are seeing that, you know, we have, we've seen, uh, oh, sorry. We've seen a few things. I mean, we, we've seen that we have um, order n and um and we've seen within there that you know there's also order constant time and we've seen lots of examples of this but this is the first example we've seen of something in between these which is login 
and, and log in, right? Things get a little bit slower as we have more items, uh, but not that fast. Um, you know, doubling from 10 to 20 items means I have to do, you know, a little bit more work, um, some amount of additional work. Um, but doubling my list from size 100 million to 200 million would involve that same kind of constant increase in work. So this is actually great. It's not quite as good as constant time, uh, but it's very close.